Hello everyone, thanks for watching this presentation. My name is Pei Tian, and I'm a PhD student from Shanghai Advanced Research Institute, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Today, I'm here to present our paper, Chobox, an infrastructureless LoRa testbed. Chobox is a joint work between Surrey, Teoglas, Nanjing Agricultural University, and Shanghai Tech University. The long-range radio technology LoRa has opened up many opportunities with solutions in the Internet of Things. It has been widely used in our daily life, supporting fields such as smart lighting, air quality monitoring, smart metering, precision agricultural, and many other applications. At the same time, IoT testbeds are playing a significant role in experimental research because of the huge functionality. For instance, we can use testbeds to develop, debug, optimize, and benchmark the performance of protocols with accurate measurement results. Second, by programming the target node, we are able to automatically test the network, not just the selected network layers or metrics. Last but not least, an outdoor test bed can offer a controlled but realistic network testing environment, and it will enable us to understand the network performance in real deployment. While well, LoRa has been studied in many fields such as network protocol design and link quality measurement, its full potential is still to be explored, and further research of LoRa is in need. But how can we build a testbed that is suitable for LoRa experimentation? To begin with, we analyze the conventional architecture of an IoT testbed, which is used in testbeds such as FlowClub, Fidelity Lab, and so on. The testbed consists with computers or servers for experiment management and test nodes for measurement. At the beginning, it will disseminate the tested firmware and also experiment configurations. This is start from the computer or server through the internet to the test nodes. After test nodes running until the end of the experiment, those nodes will then send the results back in the same way before. Here, the test node is generally consistent with a target node with desired radio and an observer for management. This kind of architecture works reliably in many test beds, but there is one problem. The infrastructure with energy supply and network supply are required in the test bed. This, however, restricts and challenges the LoRa test bed building. For instance, the LoRa support test beds, like FlowClub, has limited the number of test nodes and FitLD only supports indoor deployment. The challenges in building a lower testbed are quite tricky. Methods with wireless infrastructure such as Wi-Fi or Ethernet are inflexible and hard to deploy, and they are not scalable. While the way to use wireless infrastructure, for example 4G, requires additional operational costs. And because those wireless modules are very power hungry, they are going to run out of the energy very fast. Consequently, those infrastructure-based methods are too costly to build a lower testbed. To tackle those issues, we introduced the Chobox, an infrastructureless LoRa testbed. In our contributions, a LoRa testbed can be built without any infrastructure. For this approach, there are two main contributions. First, the firmware can be managed on target nodes. Second, the remote control is conducted using LoRa disk proposed as an efficient all-to-all multi-channel protocol based on synchronous transmissions running on lower nodes. By our design and implementations, Chobox is able to achieve low cost with off-the-shelf hardware components, long battery lifetime on Chobox nodes, flexibility during deployment, and be highly scalable in building lower testbeds. For our design and implementation, let's start from the hardware composition. As mentioned before, the Chobox node uses off-the-shelf hardware and is composed with four parts. An STM32 nuclear board as a microcontroller for operations control, a Semtech SX1276 board for LoRa communication, a NavSpark board as GPS for time synchronization, and a TS3231 as external IDC module. In this simplified pin connection diagram, besides connection for both communication, and the external interrupt, the alarm pin of RDC is connected to the reset pin of microcontroller, and we will explain it later. To support firmware management on target nodes, in the Chobox framework, 
The test node is replaced by the target node. A control node linked to the server, communicated by several commands, is responsible for disseminating the experimental configuration and collecting results. And Chopbox uses raw disk for transmission instead of the internet. Now, I will show how firmware is managed on target nodes. In Chopbox, the MCU has two 512 kilobyte flash banks. The daemon program and the firmware unattached program are put in these two banks separately. Every time when the MCU is powered on, the bootloader starts to read the flash, and then the MCU executes the program according to the selected bank. With the IDC alarm, the MCU can be rebooted and switched at desired time. So that's why we connect the IDC alarm pin to the microcontroller reset pin. In short, the key ideas of the firmware management are to support two programs by using the drawback flash feature and bank switch by MCO reboot. For this workflow, in the first two steps, the daemon firmware is running in the MCU and the firmware under test and the experimental configuration are disseminated from the control node to all the target nodes. The daemon then sets the RDC alarm according to the experimental duration and the start time. In this way, the program can come back to the daemon at the end of the experiment. Then, the MCO starts to switch to the firmware under test. Here, Toolbox provides some APIs for experiment measurement. For example, users are able to record logins by writing them in the flash. We will show this APIs later in our case study. After running for the experiment duration, at the end of the experiment, the demon is called back by the RDC alarm. At last, the experimental results stored in the test nodes are then transmitted back to the control node, which will then send to the user computer. And that is the whole workflow of the firmware management. We can clearly see that the whole procedure is independent of observer. And then, I would like to tell you how we implement remote control of the nodes using lower disk. In overall, there are three mechanisms for lower disk, and I would like to discuss them in this example scenario. Here, we do the data dissemination from the control node to all the other nodes. In a single hop network, a control node may not be able to cover all the nodes in some areas. And clearly, it is not a good choice to add more control nodes for these edge nodes. While in a multi-hop network, this problem may be solved. Inspired by the synchronous transmission achievements in LoRa, LoRaDisk adopts it in a multi-hop network in order to cover a larger area and be more flexible to different topologies and deployments. And LoRaDisk uses listen before talk with automatic frequency agility in transmission policy. That means a sender needs to monitor the channel before transmission and should be capable to jump to other channels when encountering channel conflict. This method has a slight overhead in the protocol management and provides more transmission time on each channel. This is because under the regulations, the transmission with LBD is allowed with more channel usage time than the one without LBD. For instance, for most channels, transmission with LBD is allowed with 100 second transmission time during one hour, while the one without LBD only allows 36 second in one hour. We can see it from the diagram. When quarter is reached, the node needs to stop sending messages and only can wait till the next quarter period. For node with LPD policy, it has more quarter and less waiting time, which can accelerate the data transmission. So the basic idea of LoRaDisk is to use synchronous transmissions in a multi-home network and listen before talk for more transmission quarters. Now, I would like to show our evaluation results about time and energy costs of file dissemination and collection with different file sizes. In this experiment, we deployed 21 nodes over 28 hectares with those transmission parameters of LoRa. The x-axis is a file size, and the y-axis is the time and average energy required by each node to complete those tasks. Here. I want to highlight the dissemination with a size of 50 kilobytes and 5 kilobytes, which are commonly used in the file dissemination. It will cost about 25 minutes if we send a female image of 50 kilobytes under this configuration. I also want to highlight the collection with 2 kilobytes file. 
This says it's enough in Trollbox for record the results of an experiment. We also measure the lifetime of a Trollbox node with time and energy costs. If we load a new experiment, that means we should have to complete the whole procedure of an experimenter from step 0 to step 4. The firmware under test will transmit data with no more than 36 seconds per hour on per channel. Here, we can see that the daemon firmware never exceeds the regulation upper bound, and the transmission quarter is recalculated when over the one hour period. If we update the experiment based on the former one, we can remove the link quality section and disseminate a patch file. In comparison, when only repeating an experiment from step 2 to step 4, we do not need to disseminate any firmware, which quite slows down the increase in time and energy costs. In our implementations, Trollbox are powered by four Panasonic NCR1650B batteries. Based on the calculated energy cost and completion time in each run, those batteries can be depleted around 14, 24, and 27 days respectively. The results are very exciting, which means that Trollbox can not only work scalable in deployment, but also in an acceptable battery depletion time. And last, I would like to explain this case study on how to benchmark protocols using the APS provided by Trollbox. In this case, we compare three protocols, lower disk, lower blink, and lower one in class C, and we got the results with those highlighted APS. From the analysis of the results, we show that lower disk achieves 100% reliability with the least energy consumption, where the lower blink has the lowest reliability and the longest latency, and it transmitted beyond the regulation. Lower one class C has the shortest latency, but with 16 more energy than lower disk. In conclusion, we introduced Retrobox, an infrastructure loss lower testbed with remote control on target nodes. For this design and implementation, the firmware management on target nodes uses a draw bank flash system and switches bank and runtime. And the proposed lower disk protocol allows an efficient auto data collection and dissemination. Our lower multi hub networks we have shown the experimental evaluation and communication performance, and also the nodes battery lifetime. The case study here shows that how to use Trollbox to benchmark existing lower protocols. We are releasing our code, schematics, and tutorials on how to use it and how to build a testbed from scratch. We are very enjoying on this project and we look forward to your questions and joining us in this development and in exploring the learning network. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this presentation. Thank you.